This is the second part and I've drilled and mounted the SMA connectors on the Hammond 1590A. And you see the original design employed N connectors and a BNC connector. Now, let me say this about the design of this. It's not my design. It's Hayward and Larkin design. They intended that you use an uncoated aluminum box. The shield is not continued internally. It connects at each connector with screws and, and surface mating to what hopefully is an uncoated box. The Hammond 1590A is uncoated, but there are versions of this size box that have enamel or, or some sort of colored paint applied to them. The next thing to do is to build this metal plate it connects the two center conductors of these two connections through the box and it will be soldered here and here but it's got to miss these screws I have a hunch that well first of all the screws in this design were offset vertically because they used a four bolt mount. Now in the original design, and this was a design, this was not a half ass put together, this was a, a one inch by one and a half inch plate, apparently mitered at the corners, and soldered here and here, and then soldered here and here this is a capacitor looks like a piece of wire to me but it's a capacitor and here are uh, the resistive elements that constitute the tap so we have a brass plate here now I don't think the thickness is very important I think single-sided circuit board would work brass or copper would be nice because we're soldering to it what I had hoped to use was this brass shim stock, but it's four thousandths of an inch thick. Now it's pretty stiff, but four thousandths of an inch is only a little thicker than human hair. I use this in the machine shop or sometimes when mounting scopes on older rifles it's nice to shim this it may be necessary to shim something up shim something apart brass is nice because it doesn't rust I have steel shim stock and I can solder to steel but so I think I'm gonna make this piece of they call it an inductor in the, uh, and it's probably modeled as an inductor in the uh, RF world. But I think I'll make it out of this brass shim stock. So this is a piece of brass shim stock cut out to inch by inch and a half with the corners trimmed just by I, and you can see I didn't do it very well. Now, I determined that I needed a about a half inch spacer to hold this in place. And so what I did was take a half inch nut, common nut, and with a magnet, I glue, I stuck the brass. I bent it. I stuck the brass in place. Nice thing about using a non-metallic 
metal is that you can use a magnet with no residual effects. Another good thing to remember is a half inch nut is a half inch thick. A quarter inch nut is a quarter of an inch thick. So if you need a half inch spacer, a quarter inch spacer, a nut works very well. And I'll position it as best I can by eye. To be parallel and up against the end about equally. So I'll try to solder this in place. I'm going to get on the brass first and try to tin it. Uh, the magnet is attracting my iron soldering iron. That's interesting. With that, we've soldered the inductor, or the brass plate. Try to remove the magnet. And what I did was rotate this a little bit. Which was a mistake. So I've taken out the magnet and the spacer. So while I had the uh, four thousandths of an inch shim stock out, I made this teeny tiny solder tab. Pretty crude, but I think it'll do the job. So using the uh, helping hands or the solder jig, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to try to put two of them in series. Once again using a helping hand and just positioning stuff by eye. I'm going to try to solder the resistive divider to the brass shim. Now, this leg of the resistor that's sticking down here is going to be my capacitor. And the design from Hayward and Larkin shows a, a number 22 wire sticking down about a third of the way down the second resistor. So, I'll trim it. Now, we have to solder this connection with the 51 ohm terminating resistor. So 
It'll be a tight fit. What I'm going to try to do is cut the lead on the 51 ohm resistor. Very short. And make a curly cue out of it. Sort of like a pig's tail. And I'm going to try to hook it I'm going to try to solder it. So I, I think I've soldered all three together. That is the SMA center pin, this resistor, and this resistor. Now I'm going to try to bend this resistor, cut its lead pretty short, And there we have the 51 ohm resistor soldered to the little miniature solder lug. Now, at this point, it would probably be prudent to make sure that none of the resistances have changed. So from here, so the case should read 51 ohms, and it does, 51.02. Here to here should read 2,460 ohms. And on my meter, It reads 2,409 ohms. So that's accounted for by the fact that all of these resistors are on the low side. These are a little bit crooked. That's because I used one watt instead of half watt resistors. But I'm going to wrap up the physical assembly video and then do some RF testing. Thank you for watching.